Hi, my name is Holly Dinany, and I am with Family Partners of Morris and Sussex County. And it is my pleasure to welcome you today to our weekly Lunch and Learn uh, program. It's an educational program designed to bring conversations with experts uh, in ways that are helpful to those of us who have challenged youth in our world. So we are here every week bringing you topics, introducing you to organizations, and today, it is my pleasure to have with us some representatives from the Volunteer Lawyers for Justice, which is an organization that I only recently learned about for the first time myself. And um, I am have what we have with us today, uh, Diane um, Anishak, who is the Director of Administration and Community Engagement, and Stella Libarski, um, who is the Staff Attorney. And um, I am going to let our listeners know that today we are recording this program and we will be sharing it following the presentation, as well as sending you some information that um, our friends have provided for us that will be helpful to you about all of the different services that they provide. So don't worry too much if you're missing something. Uh, we will follow up with this. And also, um, if you have questions or something that you need, uh, would like to hear a little bit more about, please drop it in the chat and we will make sure that our speakers um, are able to address that. So with no further ado, um, I'm gonna turn it over to Stella and Diana. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much for having us. And thank you everyone for attending and those who are listening in for listening in. I'm going to uh, share my screen. So give me just a minute, please. Okay, now let me just start. Okay, so I'm going to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Stella Lubarski and I'm a staff attorney at Volunteer Lawyers for Justice, where I oversee the Children's Representation Program as well as the South Ward Promise Neighborhood Program. And I'm here with Diana Anushak. Diana, you can introduce yourself. Yes, hi, thank you everyone for being here and for um, inviting us to talk to you all about our services at Volunteer Lawyers for Justice. Uh, my name is Diana Anushak and I'm the Director of Administration and Community Engagement at um, VLJ. Thank you. So we thought that we would start by telling you about who we are, what we do, and what drives us to do the work that we do. Um, we are a legal services organization. We provide free legal assistance to clients throughout New Jersey. Our mission is to improve the lives of economically disadvantaged and at-risk adults children and families in New Jersey by empowering them with the tools, advice, and pro bono representation to obtain fair and equal treatment within the legal system. Um, our team is small but mighty. Uh, we are comprised of 20 and we're growing um, skilled legal advocates and we manage nine pro bono programs and we pr are providing legal assistance uh, VLJ staff attorneys provide legal assistance directly to clients, but our program is unique in that we utilize the services of pro bono um, attorneys from large corporations and law firms who um, help represent clients and they do that pro bono. Now why uh, legal services are needed? Um, now this question has been more clear to us as the pandemic hit us um, from out of nowhere and um, made things so much more challenging than even before. But even prior to pandemic, the numbers are staggering. 31.5% um, of New Jersey's population lived below 250% of the federal poverty level. That's 2.7 million people. And that's 39% of those are children. And that's pre-pandemic. As of 2017, 71% of low-income households have experienced a civil legal program in the past year, problem, excuse me, in the past year. Oops, excuse me. <laughs> I'm here. 20% of New Jersey renters were already paying over half of their income towards rent. We don't have the numbers from the last year. They're not yet made available, but we are confident those, those numbers will highlight the need. Um, and we are committed to making sure that we are closing the gap and providing 
legal advocacy that could be life-changing for many families in need. Um, our values are to aid women, children, and families working through financial crisis, um, advocating for veterans, responding to disaster, assisting um, clients who are survivors of human trafficking, assisting clients um, who are um, have criminal record, um, and assisting veterans. Now, who are our clients? All of our clients are low income, and all of our clients are seeking help with civil, non-criminal legal issues. We do not assist clients who have criminal issues um, because most of those clients are entitled to public defenders. Um, the only time that we assist clients with semi-criminal uh, issues are clients who are seeking expungement of their criminal record as well as driver's license restoration. And we'll go into those programs a little bit later. Diana will um, talk about that in greater detail and we'll answer any questions you may have about all of our programs and the services we provide. And then I'm going to turn it over to Diana who will talk about our programs. And again, um, we do have nine programs, it's a lot. So if you have questions, uh, please submit them in the chat. Um, if you have follow-up questions, please feel free to email us or call us and we'll include our contact information at the end of the presentation. Um, thank you, Stella. So I'm gonna um, highlight a few of our programs here that we are finding um, and won't be much of a surprise to those of us that are with us today, um, some of the need, highest needs coming through um, in terms of legal services. Um, so first, I think, again, not too surprising, we have a lot of people who have um, are experiencing some housing concerns. Um, so um, our first program here that we wanted to highlight is our tenancy program where we work on eviction defense. So this program assists New Jersey residents who are facing eviction. Um, and trying to be re removed from their home, um, whether it be a rented apartment or, or you know, a home, um, or they're living in unsafe or illegal conditions. So if there's habitability issues at play, um, whether it be both or just an, you know, a rental issue, um, we encourage folks to reach out to us um, to see if there's anything that our lawyers can do to get involved, to negotiate with the landlord, um, provide representation, provide advice, inform tenants of their rights, um, especially under the um, moratorium in New Jersey and sort of what they can be doing to protect themselves and their families so they're not um, removed from their home um, illegally. So that's the first program we wanted to highlight. Um, and I'm sure, again, any providers that are in the room today are, are, are hearing of this need from their clients. Um, the second program we wanted to highlight and service area is um, consumer debt. So through VLJ's debt relief legal program, we are assisting people who are being sued for unpaid bills um, and who have debt collection in the special civil part. So what that means um, for um, those not working in the legal sector every day, like Estella and I, um, this is individuals who owe debt that are, you know, it could be a couple hundred dollars, it could be a few thousand dollars, um, but it's being addressed in the special civil court, which is anything under $15,000. So anyone who has an active suit against them should definitely get in touch with us so we can see if there's anything we might be able to do to help, again, negotiate with them, um, make sure that they're aware of their rights if they have an active case in the court. Um, even if they're being contacted by creditors, um, it's, it's good to sort of get in touch with us and see if there's something that maybe, maybe they're not even aware of a case that's against them because they might have moved or they're staying with a family member, things like that. So anything debt related, any active lawsuits, um, you know, we encourage, you know, clients to contact us as well as um, any agencies who are working with individuals who are struggling with debt to contact us. Um, and similarly, um, we also assist individuals who have substantial debt in filing for bankruptcy. Um, so sometimes that's a good option for people if they just feel like, you know, not, not going to be able to make ends meet. I can't see the light at the end. Um, I really want to see if bankruptcy is a good option for me so I can have a fresh financial start. Um, so this is another issue that um, we are seeing increased need in and we only unfortunately anticipate an increased need as the months go by and as a lot of individuals are still struggling with employment and um, all types of issues, given the state of things. I'm just going to add that another issue that we help address is 
return of the security deposit. So if tenants are moving out and they need um, a deposit on a new apartment and the landlord is not returning it, we do help with affirmatively pursuing that in the debt relief program. Yes, thank you, Stella, because it touches on kind of both of these areas here, but we certainly can talk to um, clients about that as well, for sure. It's a housing, but it's handled in the um, through the consumer debt lens. Thank you. Um, so the next two um, issues or sort of legal areas we're going to cover briefly here is related to really employability and trying to break down barriers that people are having, especially those who unfortunately um, had a loss of employment or um, reduced employment through the pandemic. Um, if they had a criminal record um, or have a criminal record, um, New Jersey has done a great job of expanding new, our expungement law over the last few years. So anyone who has any charges on their record who might be facing um, issues with getting employment, maybe getting that raise that they want or a better job that they are seeking. Um, we encourage them to contact us to see if they're eligible to file for expungement. It's become very, very open for people, which is great because, you know, things are in the past and um, individuals are just trying to move on with their lives. So if, if you have a criminal record or you know of clients you're working with who have a criminal record who might want to just see if they're eligible to file, we encourage you to refer them to us. Um, what we do is we do an initial assessment. We figure out if someone is even eligible under the statute. And if they are, we actually work to file their petition for them with the court so they can get that relief. Um, so please um, keep this in mind for your families. And Stella, if you wanna to go to the next one, I think um, very related to this issue in terms of employability is unfortunately in New Jersey, it's, it's extremely easy to lose your driver's license, which some people are not too aware of. Um, so we also help individuals who have a suspended driver's license in getting that restored. Um, it's really looking at what are um, the outstanding suspensions or unpaid parking tickets that someone might have that caused them to get their license suspended and working with the municipalities to get that resolved. So if you have anyone that has a suspended New Jersey driver's license, please tell them to call us so we can figure out if there's anything we can do to get that, get that help, get that fixed for them. Um, okay, so the, we wanted to highlight those because those I think we're, we're seeing as sort of the highest need areas for families in New Jersey right now, um, partially in result of the pandemic and partially just because um, they were high needs before the pandemic. Um, but in addition to that, we also assist individuals who are seeking to file for divorce. Um, so that is sort of where our family law practice is limited right now. It's, it's individuals who are just seeking to file for divorce. Um, unfortunately, we don't handle custody issues. We don't handle post-judgment issues. Um, we're very, very limited, unfortunately, due to our resources at this time, but we are still we do still have an active and running divorce program. So if, if you have any clients who are looking to file for divorce in New Jersey, please send them our way. Um, and then as um, Stella mentioned a bit earlier, we have a children's representation program. And what that program does, it is it represents parents and caregivers who have children with disabilities um, obtain services for their children if they're being denied in the school system. Um, um, for any providers in the room, any parents in the room, you know, students have all been struggling to, to get their um, education. And I think it's been even harder for um, students with special needs. So this program is really to work with parents and make sure they're um, advocating for parents in the school system to make sure they're getting the services that their children need to be um, learning effectively. And um, lastly here, we have some programs that are sort of focused on certain populations. Um, and it's more of a holistic program. Um, so I wanted to highlight our um, South Ward Promise Neighborhood Program, assist parents who are residing in Newark South Ward. We've included the zip codes here in case folks aren't <laughs> aware of what the South Ward of Newark is. Um, so any, any parents who are living in 07108, 07112, or 07114 um, and have children attending school in the South Ward, um, we really, really encourage you to contact us. We have a very holistic service model. We work with over 20 other providers in the in the area um, to provide really supportive services to those families. So we obviously handle the legal issues um, if we can, um, but it really opens up a lot of doors to families who are struggling. So if you have anyone who sort of falls in that in that boat, please get in touch with us. And lastly, we have a veterans program where we're assisting veterans and military personnel who have um, civil legal issues. <laughs> um, anything to add there, Stella? Right, just a point of clarification in terms of custody and child support that Diana mentioned that we don't do. So we don't do it if parties are not married 
and you are seeking to obtain child support or you are seeking to enforce an order of child support, unfortunately, that is not something that we do. But if you are married and you are seeking to file for divorce, and as part of that divorce, you're seeking to get custody of your child and you're seeking child support and you're seeking um, distribution, equitable distribution or alimony, what's referred to as spousal support, it's all um, used interchangeably, then this is something that uh, we would be able to advise you about as part of the divorce filing. Uh, so that's one. Um, part that I wanted to clarify. And also just in terms of the divorce, we do not uh, provide representation to parents uh, filing for divorce. We provide what we refer to, and Diana will go over it a little bit more, um, advice and counsel. In other words, we are uh, meeting with, attorneys are meeting with clients. They go over the pleadings, they explain the process, they review the pleadings, but clients are filing for divorce on their own. They're not being represented in court. Um, in contrast, our children's representation program, um, in which we assist parents of children with disabilities in their education matters, there we do um, place clients with volunteer attorneys for full representation. So the attorneys are the ones who actually represent the clients. They're not doing it on their own. So I just wanted to um, clarify that part. Thank you, Stella. Um, okay, so we thought it would be good, again, because we have sort of a mixed room right now. I think we have some individuals who might be interested in applying for services as well as some social service providers. Um, so we like to think about our, our programming very um, holistic. I think, you know, I sort of mentioned this earlier, but there's a few ways to sort of access our services and our um, legal services. So on sort of one side of the, on, of the list here, we have our Know Your Rights. Um, so we regularly put on Know Your Rights sessions that are currently being done virtually like this in Zoom. Um, and we record all of them and make them available to people after the fact. So um, there's a link that's included here. Everyone's gonna get this um, PowerPoint presentation after today. Um, but if you go to this link on our website, it actually includes you know, over 15 um, recorded legal Know Your Rights sessions. So I encourage you to check that out, see if there's any legal topics that you're looking to understand more. Um, and even if you're not in need of a, you don't have an active legal issue, that's a great thing, right? But if you wanna just understand more about your right, rights in a particular issue, I encourage you to check us out online um, and possibly watch any of our videos there. And then again, we, we, put, we put them on live as well. So we, we regularly post announcements about um, upcoming Know Your Rights sessions that we're hosting. Um, in this highly virtual world. Um, and additionally on this page, we have some sort of handouts and know your rights um, in information available to um, the public as well. Um, on the flip side of that, and sort of the more, um, the heavier lift of our services is direct assistance. Um, so depending on the case type that someone has and depending on how that program functions at VLJ, um, anyone who comes to the door is done, is they do a like a, a basic, intake with us and we sort of funnel them in the way that is most appropriate given our services. Um, but services could range from limited scope, um, which we consider to be advice and counsel or brief service. And that can be done by phone or by a virtual appointment like like a Zoom appointment with an attorney. Um, we also provide direct representation and that can be done through um, our staff attorneys um, or as Stella mentioned in the beginning, um, utilizing the time, the volunteer time of attorneys who work at large law firms and corporations who decide to volunteer their time with us and provide free legal services. Um, so our programming is very um, across, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a whole range of services and it sort of depends on what that person needs and what we're able to provide to them. Um, so it could be limited to a brief advice over the phone. It could be all the way through representing you in court. Um, it's really, it takes that initial um, outreach to us and, and going through that intake application to figure out what we can do. And um, we do our best to serve everyone to the highest level that we can. And I just wanna add to that, that for Know Your Rights webinars, those are available to absolutely anyone, irrespective of the income levels. So we do not screen for eligibility. Anyone can register and attend the webinar and anyone can view the webinar. Um, the, the, the advantage of registering the webinar and attending the webinar live is that number one, you can ask questions. Number two, if you register, you also will receive 
um, supplemental materials as well as the PDF of the PowerPoint presentation that uh, was used at the Know Your Rights webinars. And if there are any updates, those will be forwarded to you as well. And some of the some, uh, topics, and Diana has included the link, but some of the topics include tenancy, uh, divorce seminar, as well as special education webinars. Uh, but we have more and you can read about them uh, by clicking on the link. And we'll share this PowerPoint presentation with you so you would actually be able to click on that link. Okay, so how to apply for help. <laughs> um, so we, right now we currently have two ways to, to get in contact with us. We have an online application form um, that's available on our website that allows people who might have difficult work schedules or busy with their kids during the day, um, you know, having a hard time contacting us by phone, they can apply for our services online. And we work really, really hard to get in touch with you within one to three business days to, to go through that initial fuller intake. Um, and then on top of that, you can always call us. So we're, um, our telephone hours are open from um, nine to 4.30, Monday through Friday, um, where we are talking to you about what legal needs you have and determining if it's something we can do, we can go through that intake process. And if it's not something we do, we do our best to connect you or refer you to an agency that we think might be able to assist you. Um, just because we have certain areas that we focus on, which we reviewed, um, but we do our best to, you know, make sure people are getting the help they need, even if it's not with us. So providing referrals and contact information to other agencies. Um, what do we have next? Oh. Stella, do you want to take this one? Oh. Oh. <laughs> so last year, VLJ's work impacted 2,500 people, a little bit over 2,500 people. Um, as we mentioned earlier, we are able to provide this free legal assistance to as many uh, number of people as we do because of the volunteer attorneys who volunteer their time and leverage their expertise with us. Um, and so last year, volunteer attorneys provided 1.6 million in free legal services. Um, this is a staggering number. As you know, lawyers are very expensive. Um, and so they, we are very grateful that we are able to provide this service uh, for free to the clients who qualify for our services. Um, and we have included the quote, um, which we thought was uh, really nice and does a good job summarizing how legal help affects people and impacts people. Um, and it says VLJ has given us hope and peace, which we did not have before. We can sleep at night knowing that we do not have to fight a legal battle alone. Um, we are fortunate to get quotes like that all the time, um, but we have included this one because I think it really does a great job summarizing what um, it means for clients to have someone by their side advocating for them. Um, we know we kind of rushed through. <laughs> um, we wanted to leave a lot of time uh, to answer any questions you may have and make it more interactive to the extent possible. We have included our contact information here. Um, we encourage you to reach out to us if you have any questions, if you're not sure whether um, a family you want to refer to us would benefit from our legal help, um, I would suggest over referring than under referring. And if you're a client seeking help, um, if um, you don't, if you didn't hear about an issue that you're struggling with um, and you're wondering whether we can help, we encourage you to reach out to us. Even if we can't help, we have um, an extensive resource um, that we can uh, at least give you some direction who can assist you. So we really encourage you to reach out to us. And thank that's, you for that's, your time. And we would love to answer any questions you may have. That's great. Diana and Stella, thank you so very much, um, not only for coming to speak with us today, but for just this work that you're involved in is so um, amazingly all inclusive and um, needed. I, as you said, it was very needed before the pandemic and even more so needed now. And I just want to let you know, we had a, a couple of folks chime in and they're grateful that you're going to share your uh, presentation, your slides with us. And I also have um, additional resources that um, were shared with me before uh, just on the different programs that they offer. And um, 
I will be sharing all of that with you, but I, I wish I'm, I'm asking if maybe you could say a little bit more about, um, I have a couple questions, but one, like I know the webinars, like that's what actually I first stumbled upon you because I saw you were offering a webinar on um, the unfortunately common challenge. And I think it might become more uh, common is when you do have a special needs student who's uh, uh, academically, their needs are not being met. And of course, it's not so much that um, anyone is intentionally doing anything, but COVID has presented a special set of challenges for special needs students and educators. I mean, we're all trying to figure this out, but how would someone um, be in the loop that you are offering these webinars. I will tell everybody on the call that Family Partners, thankfully that we've connected, when I get something, I will definitely share it with our um, families and our um, community partners on our social media platforms and um, in communications that we have. But is there is there somewhere that you would recommend someone sign up for something like that? Or how does someone get, get in the loop with what you're doing? Diana, do you wanna? <laughs> Yeah, so um, we do also try and utilize our social media platforms. So we do a lot of, um, we sort of center on Facebook um, when it comes to our, our client services. And then um, if once you've sort of initiated contact with us, and I mean either you've applied for services or you've attended one of our other virtual sessions, um, we, we try to work really hard to notify anyone um, of our services coming up. So it's always sort of living on our website live, you know, any upcoming sessions that you can register for and try to attend in real time. Um, and then we always get those recorded sessions available on the site as well. And we send out, um, we send the, read, the recorded videos out to participants and those who are not able to attend as well. Um, but we do try and like, notify anyone who's on our on our email list so that's um, great so once you're in the loop you're in the loop which is good yes, yes. once you're on and same thing with you you had mentioned the you know your right sessions that you have available oh, that's on your website right yes on your website so is that the same kind of thing too that once i'm on your website and i can even just visit it on a regular basis to see what's been added but i guess if i'm in your system i should be notified but that's a great resource and i'm going to say that to my friends who are at different um West Cap and Salvation Army and other organizations that are out there working in the community, that um, these are great resources to share with your families. Because again, even if you um, have an issue that you're just curious about exploring, um, oftentimes when we start exploring, we discover other things that we didn't know we could um, have information that's, uh, I always feel information is such power, right? So um, I will be sure and highlight um, that the, the list of the link that you had on, I know we're sharing the PowerPoint, which will be um, interactive. Thank you with the embedded links, but also just to make sure that people know that these are resources that are available. And um, Fanny, I saw you turn your camera on. Did you have a question? You didn't. She's just, okay, good. I'm glad to see you. I'm happy to see you. a smiling face. Um, no, no. That's good. Because I, I wanted to, if you don't mind, could you say a little bit more about the... Um, Webinars that you do for families who have special needs kids, like with COVID, I mean, I just, I know this is something that, and I, I feel um, it is so complicated for all parties involved, but I also know that we have to, as parents, we have to advocate for our children if we're, if we're feeling that, um, that we might be working up against a system on what's going on. So how did you, who do you have speak at these webinars and, and what are you seeing as far as common, you know, themes maybe? Sure. Uh, so I'll take that one. And I also want to address the first question a little bit more about how to learn about us. So just to reiterate, the website is one way. Our Facebook page, we encourage you to follow us on Facebook. This way you get your updates. Um, we also, uh, if you are a service provider, then you can email Diana and you have Diana's uh, contact information and let her know to add you to our constant contact list. Um, if you are a client, if you're a family seeking those services, then again, visit our website, follow us on Facebook. We do post all of that information and the flyers and also on Facebook uh, groups. Um, that's a, I definitely will highlight the constant because Diane, I think that's a, an important distinction too, that if we are providers, because again, a lot of what we do, and I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but we like to give our families options, right? Of what's going on. So um, being on your constant contact would be really helpful to order to, you know, to throw the information forward. So thank you. Yeah, anyone who wants to email me or contact me after today and just 
we do um, at minimum, we do a monthly email blast with all of our resources. We, we highlight, you know, we have a session coming up or there's, there's been this change, like please let all your families know um, whether that's our services or like, you know, a big tenancy update that we want everyone to know about, you know, we do at least one at minimum one monthly email to our community partners. So please, if you're not already receiving those um, from us, please get in touch with me so I can make sure you're getting those. Um, yeah, that's, and that's what caught my eye, by the way, first time I saw I heard of you folks that somebody else had shared a webinar about again, things are changing minute by minute with education, right. And, and I again, Hats off to the educators out there, because let me tell you something, I know it's changing minute by minute for them, but I had seen a very timely um, uh, release of yours that was about new changes that were being made and how it might affect special education. So I really um, wanna give you guys props for staying current and also for helping us try to stay current because it's a big job. So thank you for that. Thank um, you. Now I'm gonna- Diana, Diana, quick question. Um, if we have any Spanish speaking clients that call, um, is that something you can facilitate uh, with assistance? Yes, um, we have a number of staff, including the majority of our frontline staff who do intake who are bilingual or trilingual. So um, anyone who calls in who speaks Spanish right away on the phone directory, it, it asks language preference and they'll ring through to someone who speaks Spanish. Um, for other languages, um, we do our best, um, but yeah, we definitely have um, the ability to, to work and talk to folks who are speaking Spanish. Thank you, that's important, thank you. Excellent question, Fanny. Thanks, Diana. And this is an excellent question. It also brings me to, uh, uh, I want to point out also that the webinars that we do, we do them in Spanish as well. We're very lucky to have a Spanish uh, speaking special education attorney who does webinars for us in Spanish. Um, so we do provide that information. And when we disseminate information to our Spanish speaking clients, even the flyer is translated into Spanish. Um, to us, it's very important that Spanish speakers have access to that information. So uh, we, to the extent Wonderful. That we really try to uh, accommodate. Um, and then to answer your question, Holly, about the webinars, what are some of the common themes? Um, they change, right, as uh, the world changes. So when <laughs> the pandemic just hit us and questions parents had was, does it like I'm my child is not is getting paper packets my child doesn't have access to technology uh, my child is being told that um, services such as speech therapy for example cannot be done remotely so we immediately put together a webinar to demystify those myths and those are myths because that is not what the law is and so uh, we've done a webinar on that several webinars on that actually when uh, school opened and there was a hybrid option or a full-time option towards the end of the year, we did a webinar on how to advocate for your child during COVID when schools go back in person. Um, now that schools, as far as we know, and God willing, nothing changes, um, kids are gonna go back to school. One of the most common questions uh, centers around compensatory education. So children who did it, who were entitled to receive services during the year, but didn't receive them, either because they were told that they couldn't get them, um, couldn't get those services, were entitled to those services, or for whatever reason, didn't receive those services. We put a webinar on how, what are their rights um, under the law to compensatory education how to advocate for compensatory education, how to calculate um, compensatory education, um, and just like how to advocate for themselves. And I'm sure we'll be putting even more information out about that topic. Another topic that we recently did was in response to Bill, uh, it's S3434. I don't know how many of you are familiar, but that bill was allowed children who were uh, turning 21 uh, to continue receiving services for another year. So we put together in a matter of two weeks, four webinars on to uh, addressing that, including two in Spanish. Um, and we wanted to do that really quickly because we wanted to let parents know that like what to do when they were getting um, their children's diploma and were told that children 
um, their children couldn't were no longer entitled to uh, special education. So we quickly put together uh, the webinars and we made sure to accommodate working parents who were not able to attend at 10 o'clock. We did that at seven o'clock at night. Um, we really do our best to try to uh, share that information with as many parents as possible because we understand that there is a lot of um, the unknown and there is a lot of concern about children. Estelle, is that a webinar that somebody could find if they went to your website? Uh, Diana, or is that something that you had, you were only able to view live? No, we record, so that is true for all of our webinars. Okay, we I just wanted to confirm. Webinars. Um, Diana, is it available yet on the website? Uh, the one from last week is not up yet, <laughs> um, but all the other ones we've done. Since, but that's, that's a good thing yeah. to know though, because I think, um, and again, interesting is that that probably is changing, right? There's definitely good advice as you're going through, but those are, um, those are evolving topics, are they not? <laughs> and then I just want another question uh, that you posed was who does those webinars? Um, we have amazing experts who've been practicing for several decades special education law and who volunteer their time by speaking, putting together uh, the materials and presenting at the Know Your Rights webinars. Um, those are the same experts who may be providing individual legal representation to clients um, and the same experts who are seeing what are the common issues, what are the common struggles, um, and they're able to address those. So we have very experienced special education attorneys who put together the uh, materials and who present and answer questions um, and provide any additional supplemental information even after the webinar concludes. And that's why I encourage everyone uh, not just to view the webinars, if, if of course they were previously recorded, there's no option to go back live, but for all upcoming webinars that we are going to host, I encourage you to register so that you can receive um, information after the webinar. I'm looking, I don't see any other questions in the chat yet, but I'm gonna encourage folks if they wanna pop off mute and ask questions, please do. But a question I have in the meantime is, what's the, what's the process? Like if a, if a parent calls with a concern, is it, first of all, is it easy for them to get someone quickly or is, you know, what's your ability to field questions immediately? And also what's the timing involved? Because again, we all know we have to be patient and we're all doing the best we can, but is it a, is there a big delay in getting information or services or what's your typical timeline? And I understand that there may be no such thing. There might be case by case basis, but what can you say about the process as far as what, when we're a provider and we're recommending a parent call, what is realistic for them to expect in the process? Sure. So I think the answer will vary depending on the legal issue involved. Um, so I think, uh, do you have a specific legal issue in mind? Because again, it will, it will vary. If they're seeking help with filing for divorce, we have divorce um, intake clinics uh, every week, Diana, or once a month. D divorce classes um, once a month at, at this time. Once a month. Um, if they have, uh, so I think it depends on the legal issue. I can talk about, for example, with the special education, how that works. So let's say you've, you attended the webinar on a topic and uh, on a special education topic, and you realize that your child really needs an advocate because even after attending that webinar, you try to advocate for your child yourself, but the district is just not accommodating. And so you feel that you would benefit from a lawyer. In that case, they would, if they reached out to us, first of all, at the um, webinar, they would be advised that we do not screen legal, uh, we do not screen clients who have children with uh, disabilities for legal merit. What that means is that we partner with two organizations. One is called Education Law Center and the other one is called Disability Rights New Jersey. They do the screening for us. So they speak with clients, they review the documents, um, they, they have experienced attorneys who are doing that. And then they refer a case to VLJ if it's appropriate for an attorney. 
to place with an attorney. So in that context, let's say education law center spoke with the um, parent, reviewed all the records and sent the case to VLJ. The next step would be for uh, the legal assistant to contact the parent and confirm that they're eligible, financially eligible for VLJ's legal services. For um, We have eligibility criteria that our um, legal assistants use. Um, and so they will get that information. If they're eligible, they will notify me. And then my job is to find an attorney for the parent. How long it takes, it varies depending on the complexity of the case. If and where you are, for example, if the parent is um, seeking um, representation at an IEP meeting, it's likely that I will find an attorney much quicker. If the parent has already filed for a due process and is in litigation stage, it's going to take much longer because the type of legal, as, because the, it's just more complex, it requires more experienced attorney. Um, and so that will take a little longer. So really, like I would say, we say it may take anywhere from two weeks to a month to find some, someone, a lawyer. Um, sometimes we may, we do not guarantee that we find lawyers, but I can say just most of the time, I, right now I don't have any case that is not placed with a volunteer attorney. But again, that doesn't mean that it's always gonna be the case, but for now I have a lot of clients and all of them have lawyers. Um, I work really hard to find people a lawyer. We all do at VLJ and so this is, uh, if we can't handle it internally, we will try our best to find someone. That's wonderful. It sounds like you have a really good process in place, which I find encouraging and that you're utilizing partners uh, to help you figure out the best spot. I know we were talking before the recording started that, you know, a lot of our services and including my friends on the call is if it's not us, who is it and how can we connect them? So I really um, appreciate that approach that you use. Um, are you anticipating, uh, what I'm wondering is like the scenario that may be happening when, when families are now sending children to school who haven't been to school in, is it eight, I don't even know, a year, a year and a half, whatever it is, that I might think my son is receiving X, Y, and Z, when in fact the school's like, oh, no, 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 we pushed him forward. And I mean, I, it seems to me like this might be um, a little bit of a bump up in need when folks kind of get back to school and, and really get into a process to find out what is happening. I mean, I don't know. Um, I know you don't have a crystal ball, but it seems like we're kind of at a, um, we'll be at an interesting stage, don't you think, with students returning to school with the school year restarting? Absolutely. I mean, we anticipate a lot of regression, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we anticipate that children are going to be that we anticipate and we already got a lot of queries from um, parents with medically fragile children about whether or not um, they have the option to keep their children at home because the pandemic is not over. Um, so we anticipate even more questions about that and the answer to that is that as of now the, there is no option as far as Department of Education is for children to be educated remotely, but for medically fragile children, there's always an option to receive home instruction, provided they get uh, all the uh, letters from the physicians and, you know, uh, but it, in terms of the law, it hasn't changed for medically fragile children. They were always entitled to home instruction, provided they meet the criteria. Um, so we do anticipate that parents are going to be asking for um, compensatory education. I do anticipate, and I anticipate that parents are going to be uh, reporting a lot of regression and wondering what they can do. And um, I anticipate and plan fully to have webinars to address those concerns. And I think. My plan is to see what kind of calls we get. I'm going to also ask my colleagues in the special education world what kind of issues come up most frequently 
and then based on that, put together a webinar to address those concerns. I'm so grateful to have your mind at the head of this. I'm going to say that, Stella. Thank you for being smart and using your resources. And I'm going to go to, we had a couple of um, questions in the chat, which the question is, do you only work in certain counties or are you statewide? We are statewide. Fantastic. And also, this is a, a little bit longer one. I don't know if you can see the chat or not, but I can read it um, if you like. And Holly, I can definitely oh. um, express it because I know I asked the question and I okay, try please, to type it ahead, as Marie. concise as I can. Um, hi, everybody. That one question I had is more of like access for families in the sense of like, I know I we work for family um, family intervention services. So I'm a clinician that works with families and we provide services for abundance of families that have access to resources to gain services like this, but families who may not like such as like scanning, computering, or um, even access to printing. Whereas like, of course, as a partner agency, we would try and help with that resource as well. But would you guys be able to help with like a family who may not be able to have that as well? Great question. Yeah, 100%. Um, so all of our services, um, we were prior to COVID, we were actually a very in person, we had a very in person service model, we were hosting 12 to 14 in person legal clinics a month, um, assisting a couple hundred people. <laughs> um, so unfortunately, we had to very quickly shift everything virtual, which we are still doing presently. Um, but we are trying very, very hard to make services as accessible as possible. We've introduced the online intake for people who are not able to call us during our business hours so we can make those arrangements. Um, we are working very hard to make sure that people are hearing back from us after an initial request for service within one to three business days. Um, my team is five people who do intake and we're doing our best, um, but there's a, definitely has been a very high call volume coming in um, for you know, more than the last year and a half, but um, certainly an increase in, in that way. Um, and in terms of access, um, we do have staff who are going to our office in person. So if it's a matter of like document collection and things like that, we're trying to meet everyone where they are. Um, we're based in downtown Newark, um, but we have definitely implemented some systems since COVID to really try and be accessible. So, you know, we accept document collection via, you know, pictures on a phone, text it to us, um, email to us. Um, it doesn't need necessarily need to be like a scan and a fact situation. So we've been very, very mindful of, of meeting people where they are and making sure that we're getting their documents, we're calling them at a time that works, we're not requiring them to be on camera if they're not comfortable, if they're not in a place where they can do that with the kids or at work on their lunch, you know, we're, we're doing everything we can to think outside the box and, and make sure our services are accessible no matter what they're seeking. Thank you for that. It really helps because I know, again, a lot of our families, we service Morris and then Sussex County. So that's definitely, we could see the disparity in that yeah. ability. Absolutely. And we do have, we have, a, we have clients who are visually impaired. We have clients who are deaf, hard of hearing. We have uh, clients who speak not just Spanish, but uh, uh, Arabic, for example, Russian, uh, many other languages that we so far have been able to accommodate all of those clients. You're making me think too, Stella, um, when I send out the information, the follow up to this, including the recording, I think I'm going to throw in a few extra of my partners in the community who aren't on the call, who I think it would behoove them to know. Um, about these resources, not only the um, services that you offer, but even just the resources on your website. Because again, I think we need to empower um, folks to educate themselves to know what their rights are and what their options are. Because again, it's very overwhelming. We're all a little bit overwhelmed, right? We're kind of trying to adjust to, um, to our new world. And I do think the fall will bring a whole new set of um, challenges to parents with uh, special needs children, but also, as you were saying, with rent and um, a lot of concerns going on, right, with people are expecting us to be back to normal and we're not quite there yet. I'm looking, let's see here. We've got some more questions in. Um, Jennifer, do you just want to pop off and ask your question? Sure. My, my phone keeps doing the, uh, the, the T9 thing. So I was talking about social security. I have a client who, or not social security, SSI. So I have a client who um, she, she's on, uh, she's, so she's partly deaf and she has other special needs, but she, I think she's in her fifties, but she's been on SSI and she wants to get off of it because she's not getting enough per month. Right. And she wants to go back to work full time but she knows she's going to get penalized for it, right? 
And she says, she's like, I can't afford this. She goes, but I know that there's going to be times where I'm not going to be able to work full time because, you know, of her special need, right? And, and so I, I didn't know what to say. And which is actually why I went on and I was like, I've got to find out this information for her and I don't know how to help her. So I didn't know if maybe if, um, you know, how or what, you know, uh, the attorneys could do for her, because I, I really, I, I don't think it is fair that she's getting penalized, right? For She would get penalized for wanting to work through this to make, give herself a better life. Um and to work full time and, uh, and, and trying to get off of this. So I'm just gonna say, I don't know much at all <laughs> about uh, social security. This is not something that uh, we at VLJ handle. Um, you can follow up with us and we can see if we can uh, provide some information about some of our partners that may be able to assist. Um, the first one that comes to mind would be Legal Services of New Jersey. Um, that's the place that I would recommend reaching out to. Um, but I honestly don't have any comment because I just don't know enough about this. Well, and I appreciate your honesty. And, and yeah, if you, you know, if you do have any partners or resources or anything, you know, I'd be willing to start in the books, you know, because this was a really good question. Okay. But legal services of New Jersey would be my first recommendation where to reach out to. Okay, thank you. Sure. I, I love it. I'm gonna I'm gonna hop on too if I can to share one one. Um, I just had before this um, lunch and learn program. I had a meeting with um, the Hope Hub in Morris County. Is your is your family in Morris or Sussex or your individual, Jennifer? Um, they're actually in Warren County. But we, do <laughs> okay. service, we service all six counties of Norwest and Norwest Cap. So, yes. uh, you know, I'm, I'm the financial coach and engagement partner out there. Yes. So, well, I it's interesting it. because um, there's a, an organization, a new organization in Morris County, which um, I just oh. wonder if there are uh, similar setups in other counties and that they have a, a, a meeting actually every week that brings a whole bunch of partners together. And they throw out, like I would say yours is a case study. This is somebody I'm struggling with. Does anybody have ideas? Um, because I think, you know, as Stella said, I mean, Stella knows what Stella knows and Stella can refer to, but that's, I appreciate your lifting up. Number one, A++ for you for being um, somebody who cares so much about your work and your clients that you're looking for solutions. I mean, we have to be creative, right? And they're out there, Jennifer, they're out there. So um you and I can talk after this call, um, Jennifer, in case I have some resources for you also. And another thing I just wanted to lift up in light of all this talk about special needs students is um, next Tuesday, we have a Spanish support group every Tuesday. And um, correct me if I'm wrong, Krista, I think it's the 24th. Our Spanish uh, support group has a speaker that's going to come in in Spanish, of course, and just talk about IEPs in general as far as understanding them what they are and how they um, work and how you can work them. Because again, I think uh, for these parents, the IEPs are hard. Number one, being a parent's hard. Number two, and number three, if you are in a different language than uh, the language barriers, that's just one more thing that's in your way, one more hurdle you have to jump over. So um, please keep in mind that family um, partners, we have support groups uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but our Tuesday evening support group is in Spanish. And um, we try to bring in speakers on topics that we think help um, parents with challenged youth. So that's just another little um, pitch. I think we might have had two things in the chat. Did I miss somebody else's? Uh, oh, Jessica, did you want to ask something about um, immigration services? I see you're saying, are there immigration services? Um, that you, you work Go ahead, Jessica. Yeah, hi. Hi, everyone. Yes, that is correct. You know, I do work with a lot of Hispanic families involved in the system, trying to educate them as far as IEP, child family teams, meetings, et cetera, et cetera. Most of these families are still struggling on top of that with their immigration status. So I was wondering if, you know, um, Stella, if your agency provides immigration attorneys um, services that are available, you know, for this um, immigrant families. So immigration is not one of the services that we provide, but again, we do have partners that we refer to frequently. Um, our clients who need immigration assistance and the organizations that we utilize, most of them have Spanish speaking clients, uh, Spanish speaking, excuse me, attorneys as well. 
Um, so if you have Spanish speaking clients in need of immigration services, um, those organizations that we can uh, provide you referrals to. Great. So yeah, we'd be definitely interested in those, you know, uh, resources. I don't know if, if there's a way that we can share those maybe via chat. Oh, sure. Uh, well, you know what, I'm gonna have to like look at it. But do you have my uh, contact information? I'll be more than happy to email it to you. I just have to look and for Jessica, it. Jessica, I'll make sure when I'm sending out the follow-up, I'll make sure Stella's information is included. And what I'm hearing just to recap um, is that that if Stella doesn't, Stella can't help, Stella's gonna connect you to who can and that there are partners that you work with that specialize in immigration and of course can speak with folks um, Spanish. I think that was the recap. So thank um, you. And yes, yes, thank the you. recap, we don't provide social assistance with social security um, appeals or social security anything, applications. We do not provide assistance in criminal law matters and we do not provide assistance in immigration. That and is fantastic. Areas, you do provide assistance, are listed all of them. I think we included all of them in our uh, presentation and which I believe Holly will be sharing with you. Yes, I will be. And I just wanna, in closing, I, I wanna thank you for your time, but um, I just, I think it's so incredible that obviously you are able to do what you do because you have a lot of attorneys and firms who are willing to support volunteer services. Um, how does that feel to be working <laughs> with such a group to make important things happen for families who really are deserving of a leg up and support, sometimes especially in COVID. Um, I'm just curious from a personal perspective, Diana and Stella, how does it feel working for such an organization? You want me to go ahead? No, I'll go first. Um, I think what we do is incredible because we're, we're making the match, right? We're, we're putting someone who cannot afford a lawyer maybe has never even met with a lawyer before, um, potentially having representation from someone who works at a very, very large law firm and charges several hundred dollars an hour um, and they don't have to pay that and they can have that quality representation. So I think we do incredible work. I'm so excited that we're able to really leverage our resources. We have an amazing staff of attorneys at VLJ, but we also have this whole network of attorneys who volunteer their time. So I think it's an incredible way to just connect people um, and really just, again, like leverage those resources that we have and the knowledge and the, the expertise and the passion to really just try and make those services available. And I think that COVID has been a difficult time, but um, we've seen how much the New Jersey community, the, the legal community is committed to um, trying to work with people who are tackling a lot um, and still facing their legal issues on top of everything else like COVID related. So um, yeah, I think it's been, it's been quite a year, <laughs> um, but um, I'm always very hopeful every day that we're doing our best to, to make services available and really help explain and navigate a complicated legal system, which we are well aware um, the, the legal system is complicated, especially in New Jersey. So we're tackling that every day. I agree wholeheartedly, <laughs> Diana. And just to add to that, um, it feels inspiring, really, and validating to work it, with people who believe in justice, who believe in giving back, who believe that it's their duty to leverage their expertise, their education, to help others in need who don't have the opportunity to pay not 100 plus, but 500 plus for some of our volunteer attorneys. Um, and so, it's interesting that you asked me today because I had a call in the morning with one of our volunteer attorneys and he said to me, you know, I'm working with a really difficult client, but I understand why that client is being difficult. I, um, my father died when I was 10. My mother raised seven children. I know what it's like to struggle. I understand that she's hard, not because she's a bad person. It's because she's carrying so much. And it is wonderful to help someone make their life a little bit better. And then on the flip side of that, I spoke with the client that he was helping. And she said, I can't tell you what it's like to have someone by my side who makes me feel like I'm not lesser than, but who just makes me feel supported and makes me feel validated and makes me feel that I'm not alone in this struggle. And so, it, it, it's really, it's humbling and it's gratifying, um, but it's also of course challenging um, 
because, you know, just to realize how high the need is, but we are so incredibly grateful to have people who are willing to, to do this work. That's a wonderful note to end on. Thank you for both of you for being with us today and for sharing um, the wonderful work that you do. And I will get this information out of this resource out to uh, families and to my partners in the community because um, you know we're here to help each other. And we are grateful for adding another wonderful tool to our box, Volunteer Lawyers for Justice. Love what you're doing and are grateful for your time. Everybody stay safe and we will follow up shortly. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you Stella. Thank you, Diana. Thank you.